Welcome to another episode of Silence is Golden, the show where we help you start and grow your very own WordPress consulting business. I'm Simon Kelly. And I'm Troy Dean. And I'm Ginny Mac. Hey, hey. What on, the? T- <laughs> on today's show, we're going to be looking at the importance of looking after yourself, both inside and outside of work. We're going to be looking at the 10 commandments of freelancing. And we're going to, do, to look at um, what you can do to ensure you've got total clarity around your role, who you're helping, and how those skills and passions of yours can really help those customers. Stay tuned. <laughs> Welcome to this very special video series called The Ten Commandments of Freelancing, where we're going to reveal the Ten Commandments of Freelancing. Sweet! (laughs) Commandment number one, thou shalt look after thyself. That's right, in order to run a successful business that will serve you and your clients for years to come, you need to make sure that you make your physical and your mental health priority numero uno. Uh, The World Health Organization says that depression and anxiety have a significant economic impact. The estimated cost of the global economy is US $1 trillion per year in lost productivity. What do you think about that? It's like the maintenance on your car. You don't wait for your car to break down before you take it in for a checkup, for maintenance, for servicing. You get those things done so that it doesn't break down. Exactly, which reminds me of a story about how I broke down in Chicago a few years ago, Simon. I'd been uh, speaking at a conference and running a full day mastermind after the conference and I was very, very, very burnt out. It had been very stressful leading up to this weekend. I'd been preparing my slides and practicing my talk and uh, lots of pressure and not enough help. And I was walking back to my Airbnb on the Monday night and I called my wife back here in Australia and I broke down on the phone. And I said, I can't keep working this out and I can't keep going at this pace. I need some help. I think I need to hire an assistant. Uh, So what we've done now is we, and it was because my life was out of balance. You're right. So what we've done now at uh, at headquarters here is we have adopted a framework to help keep us all in balance. The framework is called the five F's, courtesy of our friend James Hansberger. And the five F's are finance, fitness, friends, family, and faith. Yeah. And in the interest of complete transparency, faith for me means spirituality and is definitely the one area in my life where I feel like I'm out of balance. There's no leverage in it. There's no leverage in it. I could definitely be doing some more yoga or some more meditation or just slowing down and taking some time out to smell the roses. I'm okay with that because it's the one part of my life that I give myself about a four out of 10. So we're curious, what's the one part of your life that you'd like to focus on improving and getting yourself uh, back into balance over the next 90 days? Leave us a comment underneath this video. Like it, share it with your friends on Facebook here and, uh, and tell us what part of your life you would like to focus on improving. And we look forward to seeing you in the next video, the second commandment of freelancing to help you find freedom. shalt look after thyself um yeah definitely interested comment below and let us know what part of your life you you need to improve where are you lacking proof right right there that our video editor does acid while he's working (laughs) the hell was that about (laughs) that's gold uh shout out to samantha johnston says hey simon troy and gin andrew downey also says hi simon troy and ginny from scotland and Jeffrey Patch is also watching the show. Ah, Jeff, we just did some work together actually and just launched it last week and it's freaking awesome. So, high five, Jeff. Laced. Uh, in other news, how good was that intro from Ginny Mac? <laughs> yeah, nailed it. I, I'm out of a job. I don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> yeah. The problem is I'm... Thanks, guys. Come microphone's hard yeah. wide into the, <laughs> microphone's hard wide yeah, into well, the desk, so I can't get anywhere. Someone had please. a chat to me and said, I've got to pull you two into line, oh, so watch too. out, because here and I am today making well. sure we stay on task. <laughs> right. So that being said, okay. I want to chat about looking after ourselves. So first of all, I want to hear from you, Troy. Tell me, you know, you you gave us, you alluded to a few things in that video, which is very funny. I love those videos. Um, Tell me what you do day to day to look after yourself and why it's so important. So I have uh, in my calendar, the the two things mainly, I have uh, 
is exercise and I have two slots in my calendar that are non-negotiable. Monday mornings at seven o'clock I'm at the gym and uh, Thursday mornings at, uh, at uh, eight o'clock. Monday mornings at seven and sorry, something's going on over the desk here. My microphone's falling down and it's annoying me. <laughs> Monday on, mornings. Step focus, up. Focus, focus, focus. Monday mornings at seven o'clock I'm at the gym. I'm at the gym, <laughs> not at the gym. Monday morning at seven o'clock I'm drinking gin at the gym. And Thursday mornings at eight o'clock I'm at the gym and they are non negotiable uh, things in my calendar. And even though we have a little fella, as you know, um, my wife's been struggling with getting getting exercise scheduled in her calendar, and um, and it's been really affecting her because she's not exercising enough. And I'm like, you've got to put it in the calendar; it's non-negotiable. So Monday mornings, Thursday mornings, I'm at the gym twice a week. I do exercise, and that hopefully keeps me relatively comprehensible. Mm. And that's a non-negotiable. Non -negotiable. I, like for the last five years that I've been working with you, ever since I started, that was in the calendar. Yeah. And we've always rescheduled meetings around that. Yeah. And I think that's so good. Yeah. And for you, I know we've talked about it. It helps your mental health as well as your physical health the whole yeah, lot. Yeah, 100%. What about you, Simon? Yeah, like absolutely exercise is key. Like I run quite a lot and I also started Kung Fu in the past couple of months, which has been awesome because I can actually kind of like park my brain and someone else just kind of yells at me and tells me to do stuff, which is great. Uh, but I actually have an alarm set for 5.43, so it's 5.43, 2, 1, get up and run. So I get up and have a run Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays if I've got enough time before the coaching calls. Um, so yeah, I'll be running three days a week, usually Saturday mornings, I'll go for a big run as well. Uh, so yeah, running, Kung Fu, and then having Sundays off to like hang out with my friends. That I've found that helps me so much to recharge, just to, to go out into the world and explore and hang out with my mates and that I just, I'm ready to smash it come Monday. Yeah, so definitely need that reset time and, uh, and sleep, you need sleep apparently. Yeah. Yeah, there is yeah. a there was a tendency have a, for have a child. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to me about sleep after you, you've had a child. You, are you proposing something with me? Because you've said it quite a few times. No, I like, think you should have children can we do at some dinner point. First? No, <laughs> no, straight to the yeah. straight to the kill. Yeah, well, right. I want to know what happens in the two one five four three two one. It's get up and run. Yeah. But do you look at the alarm and go five four three, and then do you go no, it, two one get 100%. up and run? Yeah, 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 right. I'll look at it and be like, ah, oh, two one. That's all that's left. Get two one. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, that's it's, cool. Because a lot can happen in that 2-1. In that 2-1, you could go, nah, blinked, screw it, I'm going to stay in bed. Oh, yeah. No, no? Just, just, up. just get up. Oh, okay. Well, I found for myself, I, I used to live near the beach, so I went surfing a lot, and that was fantastic because you've got the water, you've got exercise, but that's a bit harder now. So I try and do something that's aerobic, which is just walking the dog every day, and that, the dog's a great way to you know force yourself to do that. Mm. And, and then I've been getting into yoga and even meditation, which I fought for years because I just found it so difficult but I've been finding I started off with a five minute one ten minute one and I'm not putting any pressure on myself to do it every day if I if it doesn't work in into the day I don't do it uh, but I've been finding I've wanted to do it more and even this morning I was in a rush but I just did a five minute one and that's all I needed and I'm, it's about keeping that pattern going yeah so I, I think even with kids Troy we've both got kids we just have to find some time that you can put allocate to yourself during the day. Definitely. And even if it's you've, you're working during the day and you have a little mini lunch break, if you, you know, lunch breaks are important, but have a bit of a lunch break and just do five minutes of breathing or something. I think that's really important. Yeah, 100%. Uh, I, just a couple of things. Hey, shout out to Tony Fraser Jones who's watching. Hey, Tony, uh, thanks for tuning in. Jamie Hill's also here. Jeffrey Patch is here. Jeffrey Patch says, step up your game, set your alarm for yeah, 3 yeah. 2 1 I am, and then it's just Don't. 3 2 1, get up and run. Ooh. You're lazy. Um, yeah. Just on the meditation thing, um, so uh, just about not giving yourself a hard time about being inconsistent. So I've started journaling this year very inconsistently. And um, can I can also just say that this iPad cover is next to useless. Absolutely next to freaking useless. I feel like I'm not even gonna bother. I sit next to useless. Not even gonna bother. <laughs> Don't talk about gin like that. No, Jesus, have some respect. Um, I've been journaling this year. Uh, I've been using the best self journal. It's a 13 yeah. week sprint of journaling. I'm so inconsistent mm. and I said to Amy the other day my wife the other day you know I said to her it's about having intention right if you don't have we've talked about this before in fact I think mm. we talk about in the freelancer videos if you don't have a plan you end up being part of someone else's plan and guess what they've got planned for you not much because their plans are centered around them That's right. so just writing down what you plan to do each day has been a big thing for me I talked to Max about this when I'm in the studio I come down here some afternoons and I want to kill someone and he said have you journaled today I'm like no yeah. I wrote if that I in have, my journal kill someone yeah whereas if I have journaled 
I f at least I feel like I'm a little more in control, yeah. Yeah. but I don't, don't have my journal here. If I did, I'd show you. I have no problem admitting this. I said to Amy the other night, I opened my journal. I said, look at this, six days in a row where there's just a line through it because I didn't journal. Mm. Six days in a row, just did not journal. But better have just to didn't have get that into transparency the habit. though, right? Yeah. Where you can look back and go, oh yeah, right, I've been a bit off because of these empty pages. That's right. So you go, okay, get back into it. And then you, yeah. it's really working that muscle. Of like of the um, repetition yeah. and the habit, but just practice. Just yeah, keep yeah. at it. Yeah. Yep. Consistency. And yeah. Also, Consistency um, like the research shows that you know not every journaling isn't for everyone, meditating isn't for every, That's right. everyone. But the research shows that you know both are as effective as each other with just that well-being thing. So mm. I find like journaling again, I find really hard. But the days where I'm sort of a bit off and don't feel like meditating, I'm, I'll sit down and try and journal. So I might do that once a week. So even try mixing it up you know, on those yeah. days that you don't. Yep. Yeah, okay, so I just wanted to talk about, um, uh, the th like we talked about in that um, Ten Commandments video, that th those five found pillars. Yeah. I just find that I've got in my mind just three easy ones, sleep, eat, play, right? Mm. And you could do a whole episode on all of these. Mm. But sleep, as Simon said, is just so important. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to look into the, you know, some study and research that's done on that, look at Arianna Huffington's book Thrive, where she just talks about all the research she's done on the how important sleep is. It's so important that Harvard now have introduced a course, uh, it's a, like a mini course that every student has to do before they start any of their courses. It's called Sleep 101, and it talks about the importance of sleep not just for health, but for performance benefits at uni. So that's how crucial it is. Wow. Um, eat, look, we all know about how you just need to basically eat less processed food, simple as that. Eat less processed food, drink more water. I don't think anyone's really drinking enough water. You know, two litres a day is I think what you're meant to be doing. Yep. And then play, when I say play, you know, Simon, you were talking about connecting with your mates. Mm. That's really important. So you've got to have connections, whether it be volunteering, doing something in your community or just hanging out with your friends or family. That's really important. So play and self-care, whatever you need for self-care. So that's what I like bottle it all up to just yeah. easy to remember and i know you're doing something about you're listening to essentialism or what's are you reading yeah what's, what's yeah what's well that? something that came up from what you just said then with ariana huffington um uh i was actually reading a book uh recently about like own the day own your life by aubrey marcus and he was talking about uh ariana huffington actually had a had a breakdown because she yeah. was working so hard <clears throat> so much and she totally collapsed she literally fell over that's right literally yeah. ended up in hospital and, um, and I was reading Essentialism recently, and um, I can't remember the name of the CEO, but he's the CEO of Kiva, or ex-CEO of Kiva, and had a similar thing happen, like organs started shutting down. At 36, he was on top of his game, uh, decided that the thing in his life that was gonna take the hit was gonna be sleep, because he's traveling like 60 to 70% of his life, and, uh, and then his body just basically didn't agree. Doctor said, you need to have a year off. He said, no, I'll be back in two months, because he's a competitive triathlete, and needed to take a year off and step down from CEO of the company. And he was, um, he was at a conference, I think at like a, a conference with Twitter. And one of the things that he mentioned was, um, was just a simple phrase like protect the asset is what he was saying. Because if you aren't able to keep working, mm -hmm. if you're not able to keep giving your highest level of contribution to the world or whatever you want to do uh, by looking after yourself, then it's not going to work. You're not going to be able to achieve the things you want. Exactly. Uh, Jennifer Paganesi says, planning out my day helps me so much. I figure out what I need to be doing each hour and it gets written out the night before. Nice. Uh, and Jeffrey Pat says, sleep, what's that? Mm. Mm. Has he got kids? Jeffrey got kids? I think he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah explains does. everything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, what, right. on what Jennifer was saying, I think, Simon, you've got some good ideas around time blocking for you know just planning out your day yeah well actually yeah exactly what um was it jen who just said that yeah. yeah so i actually uh use google calendar i use google calendar and i have a, a separate calendar just called schedule and i put in all of my schedule so it's mapped in so i can say like all right here's what i'm here's what i do every week and it's on recurring so it's the same routine every week right when do i get up when do i go to sleep and then I've got a couple of other calendars. One is like get shit done. And whenever I need to do something and I want to time block things to get done, I put it in that particular calendar. So I can turn on and off the schedule and I can just see like my appointments and my get shit done times. And like that's working pretty well because I can also look back and go, what did I do? So one planning ahead the night before and a couple of days before, but then adjusting throughout the day and going, well, that didn't work, that didn't work, look at that gap. And yet I can see the visibility of not just what I planned and didn't happen, but just the gaps, like wh where did that time go? I need, I need to write that down so there's visibility and then I can assess and adjust. 
Very Fun cool. Times. I, I like that. That's a good tip. Yeah. Cheers. All right, so I we've got a bit of a video that I want to show everyone. It's something that we did. We had a bit of fun with it as well. So we've talked about sort of outside of work, then time blocking, but also when you are at work, we're all at our desk for a long time every day. So the importance of taking a little mini break so and doing some stretches. So check out this video and you, you might pick up a few little stretching tips. Hey. <laughs> As freelancers, we're at our desks a lot, more than six hours a day, and I'm sure it's up to 10, sometimes even 12 hours a day. Now we all have read things about how you need to get up every half hour and take a break, and I know how hard that is. But today I just wanted to give you a couple of stretches for some bad habits that you may have got into without even realizing. So these will only take a few minutes each day, and even if you did this once or twice a day, forget about every half hour, let's start small, it will make a big difference. The phone shoulder might be one of your bad habits. Here's how we remedy that. Nice and easy, just sitting at the desk and rotating your shoulders backwards for about three to five, nice and steady, and then forwards the other way for about three to five. If you're finding your neck's quite sore, just a really gentle stretch, pulling gently over to one side, holding for about five to 10 seconds, and then the other side, same thing, five to 10 seconds, will definitely help with that phone shoulder. Slouching at the desk is something we are all guilty of from time to time. So here's a few stretches that will help with that. So you've been slouching and you can often feel it in your neck, shoulders and lower back. All you need to do with the slouching is lean forward. I know it sounds counterintuitive, but if you can sort of hold your stomach muscles in and then bend from the waist, and really reach those arms forward. Hold that again for about five to 15 seconds, ideally about 15 if you can. And then once you've done that, come up and reach up nice and high, palms interlaced, point it up at the sky, and just stretch as tall as you can while it feels just a little stretch without feeling too uncomfortable. And hold that for about, again, 15 seconds if you can. Then give it a shake out and that will help those afternoon slumps. So working at your desk, you think it might be all about the upper body, but your lower body actually gets a little bit sore and tight as well. So let's not forget about that. So a couple of easy things that again you can do at the desk. We're going to now go down and do a hamstring stretch and you can feel this one straight away. So basically sitting down, legs straight, just a little bend and reaching down to your toes. Now, not everyone is as flexible as each other. So what you just need to do here is you can have a slight bend and just go down as far as you can. So if you can only reach down to your shins, do that. If you can reach down all the way, even better. And you should feel this in your hamstrings at the back of your legs there. And the second exercise that you can do for that lower body is this is sort of knees and hips is again sitting at your desk just pull your leg up and holding it in so just as much as it feels so you can feel a slight stretch without being too painful hold that again for about 15 seconds and always remember to swap sides so that is a wrap my friends next time you're working at your desk and you feel a little pinch here or there Remember these stretches, it'll take two minutes max. Give it a go and you'll be feeling a heck of a lot better. Good luck. Oh, feeling pretty good. All right. Yeah. Desk stretch is nice. It does help to like release some energy, doesn't it? You're like, ah, I feel pretty good. Yeah. Especially ah. when you do the hamstring stretch, it's like there's energy stored in your legs and you're like, mm. actually, it gives you a little hit. I, find. I feel amazing when you do the hamstring stretch. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> we still having kids? <laughs> so now that you're all ready to uh, uh, don't get to work, <laughs> yeah. now you're ready to get to work, you're all limbered up, let's talk about growing the business, right? So one of the best ways you can do that is by having a, a proposal that converts really well, right? You have to be able to use one in order to convert your leads and to become clients. We have a proposal that's been downloaded 
thousands, uh, tens of thousands of times, maybe a hundred thousand. I don't know. I don't know. Be pretty close. It's a been lot. there for a while. Yeah. A lot. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> well said. It's been downloaded it's been a lot. Downloaded a lot, and uh, it's been used to win what, thousands of projects. What, like, actually, what I can tell yeah. you is that our proposal template <coughs> is responsible for generating about fifty million dollars a year in WordPress consulting business. There you go. Across our membership. That's pretty. Am- just in the membership. That's yeah. not even. That's not that. Publicly. That's that doesn't even include the people who have downloaded the proposal template, yeah. and you know, uh, too much of a tight ass to actually join the program and just you know, just leeching off our free. Stuff. That's it right. doesn't include them. All due yeah. respect, uh, but just yeah. our, just within our membership, yeah. that thing generates about fifty million dollars a year in WordPress consulting business and digital marketing services. Pretty awesome. And the key really is the the nine different parts that are included That's in right. the proposal. Uh, it's not just a matter of like here's a list of different plugins that I'm going to install for your client. Oh, why didn't they? Accept my proposal. So we want to share with you the the nine different parts, uh, or maybe just a little snippet of those. Let's check it out. Time to dig into the gold nugget. There are nine key sections that you have to have in your proposal. I'm going to walk you through each of them right now. Section number one is called the snapshot. Section number two is called the business needs. Section number three is called the audience needs. Section number four is called the solution. Section number five is called the timeline. Section number six is my favorite section. It's called the investment. Directly after the investment, you want to include an FAQ section. Section number eight is called next steps. And section number nine is what I call the mutual agreement. There's all the different steps. Very exciting. There's what could be within them? There's the different sections. <coughs> mm-hmm. So, the mm-hmm. number one thing that improved that proposal like 800% on, it was already really good, but when we added the FAQs section uh, after the investment, yeah. because the FAQs are basically any objections that your customers might have, yeah. but you couch them as frequently asked questions. Nice. Like, for example, once you've launched my website, can you uh, change the HTML signature on my email in Outlook? (laughs) To which, of course, the answer is no. Mm -hmm. I can't and I don't want to. Mm, Exactly. Yeah. How long will it take for me to appear on the page page on Google? Google. Yeah, well, that depends on the niche that you're in. (laughs) Exactly. So just handling all of those different things uh, and it shows that you're the expert. So it's a very, very nice little touch you got going on there. Mm. You can actually download that proposal and see the rest of the videos. There's like a three-part series of videos. You can access at wplinks.io slash proposal. Uh, you can go ahead and check that out. Uh, by the way, just looping back, Jennifer Paganesi says, I have my to-do list in Asana, and then I use an hourly paper planner to time block, and for fun, I use colored markers and stickers. Stop it. Out of control. She's having way too much fun at work. In the 3D world, that's crazy. Awesome. So Asana plus like a scheduler, that's great. Very nice. So taking those things you need to do and putting them into an actual time block. Love it. Awesome. One of the things that we don't really talk about that much here is uh, is the Blueprint program and Mavericks and like how they're different and who it's kind of right for. Um, so I just want to have a little bit of a chat about that. So the Blueprint really, um, like the phrasing behind it and who it's right for is if you want to if you want to start or grow your WordPress consulting business, the Blueprint helps to take the processes, systems, tools, and templates to help you run client meetings better, help you close deals better, help you get the kind of clients that you want that are gonna be right for you, stop doing the the time for money business, and it's gonna help you find freedom in that way. Mavericks Club, on the other hand, a lot of our like Blueprint alumni have joined Mavericks Club, where they've seen like there's more potential in their business to create some more leverage, um, hire a team, grow their business, and like scale their agency. Whether that means like scaling to generate more revenue or scale to take themselves out of it, which is something that I think a lot of people need to do to become a business owner instead of so much in the business. So they're really like the two differences between uh, the two programs that we have. Yeah. 
Anything and part of that you want to? Can I, oh, <coughs> just from the customer success point of view too, because um, mm. I know I sort of am with the elevators we call our blueprint members um, throughout their whole journey. So what we try and do, and Simon as head coach, you know this too, is we try and really um, support them so their business is continually growing. So you come in at a certain point, wherever that point might may be, and the business just gets better and better through the skills and, and through the knowledge and the community support there. And then I think eventually what we've been seeing is uh, is people that then get to that level where they go, hey, I'm, I've got this really going beautifully. Mm. Let me scale to that real next level. And that's where we're seeing a few of our elevators now come through to Mavericks, which is really rewarding. Yeah. Mm. Um, I like to, I had, had a phone conversation with someone last week who joined Mavericks and I said, look, and they'd been through the blueprint. I said, the blueprint really takes you from freelancer to consultant. Mavericks takes you from consultant to CEO. Nice. That's kind of the differentiator there. That's a much more succinct way to put it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, we actually, when we went to Santa Monica, we had some, we did some testimonial filming, uh, which was awesome. That event was absolutely freaking mind blowing. Mm -hmm. And we had one of our coaches, Christina Hawkins, uh, get behind the camera and had a few things to say that we'd love to share with you now. Even if you're not even the WordPress field, you're a freelancer, Blueprint, no, no qualms about it. I, re I have a WordPress meetup that I do and I'm always telling them, you need to do this. The mistakes that I made the first 15 years of my business, you won't have to go through that. You'll have this all ready for you. It's fantastic. Mavericks, if you're kind of at my level and you've, you've got a team um, and you just, like I said, you just want to get over that hump and you're not sure how and, and again, you're kind of feeling alone again, that's for sure the Mavericks group because it's not just Troy, it's not just him talking to you, but the, you're going to be surrounded by others in the same boat as you. It was so different than ever, any other course I'd ever taken because he actually got to the point, actually gave me value during the whole thing. It wasn't a pitch. It wasn't a, you know, I promise and here, look at me how wonderful I am. And at the end, it wasn't like, join me, join me. It was like, here's a, here you go. Here's, here's the stuff you need to do. Now just go implement what I've given you. And it was just such a different way of looking at it rather than trying to sell me, join me. It was just, uh, here, here, you kind of start off like, oh my God, I'm overwhelmed. The second day is like information overwhelm. And then the third day is some clarity kind of kicks in. Um, today, the live event was fantastic because I think that's when I went, ah, now I have a lot more clarity in what I need to do. One is definitely travel more with my family. I, I, do, I do travel, but I want to do more of it. I've got girls that are growing. My 17-year-old is going to college. She probably won't even want to travel with me anymore anyway. Um, the younger ones, same with them. And uh, my husband's retiring, so I kind of want to be that money earner as well so that he can kind of take a break. You know, he can retire officially and just do what he wants to do. So. Uh, just want to loop back. Thank you, Christina Hawkins, for that. Just want to loop back uh, and just um, just another way of looking at things. So Charmaine, who's my assistant now in our Manila office, mm -hmm. she, her and Michelle have been working together to put together a to-do list for me because I'm notoriously hopeless at organising and prioritising my shit. Yeah. Right? I just want to jump in and just do everything at the same time. Yeah. And so now I don't use, I put things in Asana. I go, oh, well, this is all the stuff I need to do. And these are kind of, you know, like when it needs to happen. And I just send a boxer to Charmaine and they organize a to-do list for me. And they just give it to me in Slack. Just a little checklist in Slack. This is what you're doing today. Mm -hmm. So I just want to challenge people to think, you know, if you've got an assistant, maybe they're actually better at organizing you than you are. Mm -hmm. Interestingly, there, there are two lights on here at the moment on the tally lights and I'm not yeah. sure which camera to look at. Well, red is on and green is oh, next. Is oh, that right, Max? Oh, oh, Bam, there's there the we thumbs go. up from Max. I didn't know that. So sorry, I was doing this one. I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> so there you go. Uh, maybe you're not the best person to manage your to-do list. Maybe you're the best person to just get it out of your head what needs to happen, but get someone else to manage your to-do list for you. Mm -hmm. exactly. uh, Andrew Voirol says, put your own mask on first. Yep, you're on a plane right now, Andrew. <laughs> I was actually, Max and I were talking about this yesterday, and he goes, uh, it's just like the saying, put your own mask on last. I like, no, 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 first. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 Because you'll die, right? You can't help anyone else. That's right, fit your own mask first. Save the kids. I'm like, yeah, your heart's in the right place, Max. The oxygen mask is not. We've got about four seconds left, and we have a couple of questions from our community, so we do want to help some people get unstuck. 
Let's get unstuck. Oh. Oh, this yeah. is the section where I read the questions well, and someone else well, answers them. We'll see. Uh, okay. Jenny Lackanen, who is a new member of uh, WP Elevation, says, I want to implement the request a connection suggestion in incoming. Here we go. So this is where we we oh. suggest that you request that they connect with you on social media before you talk to them. Mm -hmm. It's a little uh, positioning thing. You make them jump through one hoop before they get to. She said, most of my audience is on Instagram. Does it make sense to ask them to go follow my Instagram business account, which doesn't require an introduction, and anyone can click the button? Yeah, sure. I'm thinking not, but I also want to implement this suggestion, and I'm struggling with figuring out a way to do it. Jenny, you're overthinking it. Just tell them to go do something. And it, what you're trying to do here is you're trying to train them to become a compliant client. So tell them to follow your Instagram business account because you post inspirational stuff there and you know for whatever other reason like we, we we say you know follow our facebook page because that's where we put out our best stuff that's where we put it our live streams so you, they just need to do something could be follow you on instagram follow you on twitter doesn't matter you just want them to jump through one hoop before they get to you because mm -hmm. yeah. that can create the red flag if they don't do it then you go well there you go you're not going to follow instructions how am i going to get content out of you that's right. how am i going to get approval how will i get the invoice paid so the classic one is i oh, just go follow me on linkedin or connect with me on linkedin and they're like oh i don't use linkedin that's for wankers i don't understand it and I'm like, well, I'm with, you know, we're not going to work together because you're going to ask me to update your email signature and I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. Matali Griffin says, hey, everybody, just a little email query. How do you go about sorting out G Suite for your clients? That is Google Suite for your clients. Do you ask them to sign up to G Suite and send you their info so you can set up their email or do you sort out G Suite yourself and then charge them? Sign uh, I say you can sort it out and I can refer you to someone else who can help you, but that's not what we do. So. Enjoy. That's Google right. have a lot of support. They have phone support and it's actually really good. If you can't set up something with Google, then um, that's probably a red flag right there. Yeah, or yeah. you could, um, you could, oh, I'm trying to think of Peter's last name. Beatler? Peter Moriarty. Just oh. call my friend Peter Moriarty in Sydney. Big shout out to Peter if he's watching this because they are specialist Google Suite implementers. There you go. So partner, we, it, like if I was still doing this for clients, I would just partner with Peter and I'd say, hey, if you want G Suite sorted out, go and see Peter Moriarty at, uh, I can't remember the name of his company, but anyway, he'll tell me. Um, can someone tag Peter in this show so he comes by and leaves his details? Um, and Peter will sort out your G Suite stuff. I wouldn't do it for clients unless it was my core business, same That's as hosting. Right. I'm not gonna sort out the hosting for my clients because it's not my core business. I don't want the responsibility for that. Yeah, awesome. Ask who, not how. Someone Correct. else can get that done. That's right. Uh, very good. Awesome. As always, this has been pretty fun. It's been it's awesome having you It's been on, great Jim. having Jin on the show. Thanks, guys. Yeah. I've thoroughly enjoyed my time with you both. And you've both done very well. I didn't have to rein you in too much. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Very good. Bit of bit of fresh blood on the show. Yeah, exactly. Someone, <laughs> someone, nothing, someone nothing to look at. Spilled during the, the, the show, no. which is great. Spilled pre-show. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. I had a cup of water and I accidentally went like this before the show, like two minutes before it started. Yeah. Went over all the equipment. Yeah. We There's only camera towels. gear and TVs and <laughs> speakers and everything. I wish That's we what were, happens yeah. when you bring an amateur on. I wish we were, <laughs> no, I wish no, we were live no, when no, that no. happened. This no. feels a little bit like you can be the next Carrie Bickmore. This feels a bit like, you know. Oh, wow. Is that I've a got a lot to live up to, but I'll give that a go. This is how Carrie started. She started with her own little news there desk on, on Rove. There you go. Years and years ago. Oh, that's right. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's yeah. see how Especially we go. Take the Thumbs piss up. Let go. them know in the comments. Yeah, let us, know in the, let us know in the comments if you like Gin on the show. Of course, you know what happens if no one comments, Gin. <laughs> I get fired, so please. <laughs> Let us know. Please, please, save no, no gin. No pressure, no pressure, but hashtag, oh, wow. hashtag save gin yeah. under the show, under the video, if you'd like to see gin back on uh, another show. Stu Joseph can't wait for the next episode. Go uh, Awesome. Hey, this has been fun. Thanks very much for joining in. Uh, uh, we will see you again next week. Uh, I'm Troy Dean. I'm Ginny Mack. And I'm Simon Kelly, and remember, knowledge is power. And silence, silence is golden! golden.